Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the transpose function in SPSS. So I have here in the data view uh, some fictitious data and has an ID number for participants in counseling research, uh, duration of treatment, the gender, and a symptom level, which would be the dependent variable. Now this data is properly arranged for analysis in SPSS meaning the variables are in columns, duration, gender, symptom level, for example, and the cases or participants are listed in rows, uh, 1005, 1007. So the participant data is listed in the row, variables in the columns. So to show you how to use the transpose function, first I'm going to use it on this data and essentially be putting this data in the incorrect format, the format that we want to convert back. However, there may be reasons you want to transpose this data in terms of preparing it for presentation or something of that nature. So this is still useful uh, to know how to do, but what I'm really doing here is converting this into a format that uh, is not very easy to work with in SPSS. So let me reset this to the default. So this is what it looks like when you move to uh, the transpose dialog. And you can see I have, I have the ID, the duration, gender, and symptom level, and that's, they're all listed here, all the variables. So one, it's like the name variable, of course that would be the ID. That's the name variable. And then the other variables will move over into the variables list box. And I'm just going to reorder them. You can just drag and drop just so they match the way I have it arranged here. And then when you click OK, you're going to open up a separate uh, file. Right, so this is a separate file. So here's the original. Well, this is the output screen, but here's the original. And here's a separate file. So it hasn't erased. Uh, your data, it's created a new file containing the transposed data. And you can see the cases are now in columns and the independent variables are in rows and of course the dependent variable is in a row. Now sometimes we receive data this way uh, because we're using a convenience sample and perhaps somebody unfamiliar with SPSS was recording the data and they recorded it this way. Or maybe when they're recording it, uh, it was never intended to be analyzed in any manner. It was just being recorded. So this seemed like an OK way to record it. Uh, perhaps it was recorded just more as a reference. But for analyzation in SPSS, we need to convert it back to the way I had it in the beginning. So you receive a data set like this uh, that's structured in a way that's not uh, too useful for SPSS. We go to data and transpose. And you can see now the variables in the left list box are much different. Right? They're all the cases and case label. So to convert this back to the way I had it, we want uh, case label to be the name variable. And we want all the individual cases to be the variables. So if you just select the first one and then click Control A, that'll highlight all of the cases, all 90. And you can move them over all at once. When you click OK, you're going to get yet another data set. As you can see, it is formatted back to a way that is useful for analysis in SPSS. Some important notes, of course, it's changed the ID. Now it's K underscore and then the number. And for duration and gender, it's using the numeric value uh, behind those variables. So it's still correct, it's just not displaying the string anymore. So it has 0, 1, and 2 for duration. 
and then of course 0 and 1 for gender. So if we uh, minimize these and move back to the original, you can see this has the strings. The A1 button up here switches it back so you can see the number behind it. So it did retain all the properties that we would really need, uh, just not the string view, which would be convenient. And of course, in variable view, you have to set that uh, under values. So you'd have to reset that in the last file that I created. So a few tips here. Uh, of course, I would recommend uh, trying to acquire your data or arrange your data collection uh, in a format uh, where you have the variables and columns and the cases and rows to begin with. Uh, that'll save you having to go through uh, transposing them. And of course, another possibility is if you're collecting data in Excel, which is a, a very common way to collect data. We oftentimes collect it in Excel and then we import it into SPSS. Uh, that uh, Excel offers a few different ways to transpose data, and I cover those in another video. Uh, however, in many circumstances, I would find Excel to be a little more useful in terms of that transpose uh, ability, a little, little easier to use, specifically because you wouldn't lose the strings as you do in SPSS. However, there are several factors that would determine whether you want to approach it uh, using Excel or SPSS, it is convenient that uh, you can transpose using either program. If you have data in Excel and you want to import it into SPSS, I have a separate video that covers that as well. I hope you found this video on transposing data in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.